Okay. Hi, guys. How you going? So having this hilarious conversation with James here. Uh, James, your channel's called... The Energy Flow Tribe, and then in brackets, James Brockhurst, because it's more than just me now, so okay. it's sort of open mind. Nucleus of a no local group to sort of do, do things with as well. Okay. So um, I'll give you a link to the James's channel below when we're finished, but we're just going to retract on that conversation that we were just having, um, which was, um, I was talking about being in Durham, and these tiny, like, little uh, cobblestone roads sort of in a circle going up to the top, and there's, like, a um, courtyard area, and then there's a cathedral on the top. So we were talking about the plaques on the, on the buildings and the date on them. And uh, carry on, James, what you were saying there. What else do they call plaque? Right, well... You'll find this pattern with, with so many words that they've got double meanings. They might be a slightly different spell, but a lot of like terraced brick houses, it'll have a plaque stuck on it with AD 1880 or whatever. Well, a plaque um, is a build-up on the teeth. It's something that's stuck on, same as tartar, which is another interesting word. And <laughs> then, then you start looking at... Um, some of the more grandiose buildings, they've got things called facades, or what I, I actually call them Phoenician vomit, <laughs> because it's like they've stuck this decorative thing over the brick, um, this plaster, um, and sort of like claimed it, they've, it's been dressed up. And it's funny, you have dressing stones as well. It's, it's like, you just, what are the chances of this, this all being coincidental? Um, and I'd say not, none whatsoever. I don't believe in coincidence. I don't see things as being coincidental in any aspect of their lives at all. Um, so you kind of have to, when you grow up in a place like the UK or England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, any of them, you're surrounded by these really sort of like surrounded by uparts that just don't fit into the historical narrative and you're constantly coming across them and like I can remember I, I, where I lived was really near the Hadrian's Wall and there was um, oh, a place beginning with C I can't remember the name of it really helpful that's um, supposed to be Roman barracks that be Carlisle yeah, uh, not Carlisle. Carlisle. No, no, not Carlisle. It's on the, it's on that road that goes across the military road, and it begins with a C. Um. Anyway, there's a Roman barracks there, and you kind of go there as a kid or something, and they've got like running water, and they've got running toilets, and they've got, and you go and like, huh? Uh, and this is supposed to be how many years ago? And even as a child, you're questioning the narrative. Because it doesn't seem to fit that you'd lose something for 1,800 years and then suddenly you remember, oh, that's right, we can put a toilet, or 1,900 years suddenly, oh, we could, put, we could put a toilet inside the house rather than having it in the backyard. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, go on. It's, um, it's uh, all very peculiar. I mean, you've got the stories of the Sun King Louis the Fourteenth in France and he had these fountains and then they had to pump water. And it's like, well and yet in in these palaces there's no toilets. But they've got the, the ability to pump water but just but just decorative fountains. It's like, well that doesn't add up either. <laughs> it, none none of the the more you sort of do cross comparison. I mean, you've only got to go on Wikipedia, look at something, and then look at another thing, and then compare the dates that they're showing, and they just don't add up. It, they're, they're in conflict with each other. As a, as a singular topic, if you looked at one thing, then you could just read it and say, oh, it says this and this and this. But then when you look at something else, you think, hold on a minute, that said that. And I feel this is also one of the reasons in school why you have this chopping and changing of 
one subject you might do English for the first hour and then you swap to maths and then you swap to something else and then yeah. it's like it ends with a bell it's it's like a, almost like a a vibrational signal signal to say right forget that bit now and now we're doing this rather than do a, a subject and the other problem is with school it's an extension of this game that is what is called the terrible twos that first seven years of your life you just just observe the way babies and toddlers their eyes are like sponges they're just looking around observing everything they're not really knowing what they're seeing i, I have this theory that a lot of babies will Will continuously cry because they've realized it's like what the hell have i come into <laughs> it it's very much like um going for a job you it, to me it's like you've got the a large number of souls that want to come into this but when they get here they think oh i don't want to be here i mean you just hear the majority of people they're like they wish they weren't here or they're not happy with life so you, you cry know, for but, the first year of your life a lot seem to, yeah, um, yeah. because it's, it's like in a knowing that things aren't right. But this is a feeling I've had as far back as I can remember. And it's like, I don't know what it is. I've got no proof of it, but something just doesn't feel right about this entire experience. But I don't know. I, you don't know where to look. Yeah, but don't you don't you feel that? I mean, I feel that right now it feels more right than it's ever done before. Well, to me, it now makes everything makes perfect sense. To be honest, yeah, I don't have any internal conflict with the world. No, I would be actually more concerned if suddenly the external world it's all suddenly peaceful because it's like, what's going on? <laughs> why there's as it talks in Revelations about why there's wars and rumors of wars. That's a, a mirrored reflection because. I feel it is human energy that is powering everything. When they say that man is destroying the world, that, that's not that far off the truth. But it's always a half truth. Yeah, man is destroying the world, but due to the scripts that they're being given, and they're they're following it without without question. I mean, there's that thing called the terrible twos, and you'll say you'll be told something by a parent or and adults and, and it'll be why and then you keep playing this game until that parent or guardian will lose the temper and say because i told you to which is not a satisfactory answer and then when you go to school you get the same thing hands up if anybody who doesn't understand so if you're brave enough to get over that fear of putting your hand up and saying i don't understand and then you end up getting punished. You're either sent out the class or told to shut up for asking why. <laughs> but the other thing is, is that you, even if you do it once, you're not going to do it again because you get totally yeah. embarrassed that first time that you do it, and you think, "Oh, I'm not going to, not going to do that again." So today, I was watching Martin Leakey's channel this morning. I'll give you a link to it below when I'm finished this, and I'll give you a link to all these videos. But what he was talking about, and I showed this to James earlier. This is talking about animals behaving strangely. So I'm going to share this with you guys. Uh, I'm not going to share the sound. I'm talking about these reindeers running in circles, in this case. Um, talking about these animals running in circles. And then they're talking about... Um, this one is talking about all these different animals like sheep, cows. Um, these are these are cows, and then this one, which James immediately said reminded him of Mecca. Um, this one sheep. It walking in circles for 12 days straight is a bad sign and it looks like the Kabar. What do they know that we don't know? And then the scientists, they were asking scientists about it and the scientists were saying that they were walking in circles because 
they were in a round enclosure, so they didn't know any different. And then these ones, which are like sheep walking in circles around an upside down dumpster. And I'll link all of these videos so you can have a look. And then this one I thought was hilarious. I oh, know it wasn't that one. Where's my chickens gone? I had some chickens running around a tree, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Um, that's the Chinese one again. Where's the chicken one? Oh, that's the that's the cows one. The cow one's really weird. Uh, and then there's ants. But apparently in the in the stage of the ants, in the case of the ants, they do that when their queen dies and they do it until they all die. They just walk into in circles until they all die. It's bizarre. Oh, there's the chickens. I like that one. <laughs> I wonder if it's to, to whether they're going clockwise or anti-clockwise with depending on where they are in Earth. That would be interesting. So, are the ones in the northern hemisphere all going clockwise and the, a, a bit like when you take the, the flag out of the bath and the, the water vortex and that whole well, thing that, That's supposed to be a lie. That's actually yeah, supposed yeah. to not be true. We could try that one day um, with you where you are and me where I am. Yeah. And see if it's true because it's supposed to be a lie. But I don't know. I haven't done that for a long time. Um, probably down pipes and things, I would have thought. Don't know. Anyway, the, one of the, the actual reason that we got together today was to talk about the Wizard of Oz because I was chatting to James last time and we got talking about the Wizard of Oz and we got talking about the um, the concepts behind it and he was saying, hey, Kim, you've missed out some vital stuff out of that. And I went, oh, yeah, like what? And he went, um, so I'll, over to you. Uh, so the Wizard of Oz, what's the Wizard of Oz about? Right. Um I would read that as an internal story of yourself and it being one character. So the Dorothy is the door of B. You, you start off in this black and white, very black and white world, and then you go into a technicolor dream. And then all these characters are aspects of yourself. The Toto, well, it's 2-2, 22, you could say. Um, it's a lap dog. It's it's the instinct. It's the the inner knowing, um, because it's Toto that while they're all, while all these characters are wowed and by this great sort of green headed sort of illusion of a wizard, the dog knows and just pulls the curtain back and shows there's a man operating controls and it's all an illusion and based on a lie. I thought that was hilarious. And yeah. when you, you've got the witch who wants to take the dog away. Um, it's like destroying human instincts, the, the, destroying that connection. And then Dorothy goes into the dream. Um, and then you've got, she meets the characters. You've got the scarecrow or the straw man, which I think you came up with a better analogy for what that represents than just a legal fiction it's like the if only you had a brain <laughs> yeah that's wisdom to me it's wisdom but um i got the uh the yellow brick road being following the impulses and desires of materialism that's the yellow bricks of the gold and then you went into the wizard of oz and oz being the a au the gold in AU, and then on the table, on the, on the, um, what do you call that table with all the minerals on it, or like gold and lead, and what's that table called? The elementary table. That's right. So on the elementary table, gold is AU, which is AU is Australia in the two-letter configuration. So. Um, 
I don't know where the Emerald City comes into it at all. What about what are your what are your takes on the Emerald City? That I would say is connected with the the pineal gland. I I see it as a sort of physically laid out story, which internally is is what is the Kundalini rising. The the scarecrow in that when Dorothy meets the scarecrow, he go he says it it could be that way or that way. It's like there's, it's like it hasn't got a brain. He's got no moral, no internal compass. Yeah. To know where. Yeah. So, then, um, go on, go ahead. So then you've got the Tin Man, who's he's got a he's got an axe in his hand. He's 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 got a weapon, but he lacks the oil. He hasn't got the spiritual oil to animate himself. So it's just like a a, a representing a physical body. He's just a a hollow Tin Man. He's lacking that essence. And the essence it's, being the heart. Yeah, it's like a separation of self as as characters. That's that's my sort of interpretation on it. And then the lion lacks the true conviction, the courage in themselves and is frightened of everything. Yeah. It can put on the lion can put on a like early on in the film, can put on a display to look terrifying, but it's all bluff. There's no yeah. There's nothing real behind it to back it up. It's just a, it's just it's a pretend it's stereotypical bully. We've all met yeah. them. They walk through their walk through their life, going, "Yeah, come on, take me on, take me on," and you take them on, and they go, eh, "Don't be it's yeah, scary." I think, if I remember rightly, is it Dorothy? She slaps him on the nose, and he goes, "Ow!" That hurts uh, yeah. or something. Yeah, he starts crying. Gets his tail and starts wiping. I just watched it half an hour ago. That's the reason that I know he's he's like wiping his wiping his tears with the tail. So when it first of all starts and Dorothy ends up uh, landing because the house lands on the witch in the land of Oz, and um, one of the first songs they sing is "Somewhere Over the Rainbow." And with somewhere over the rainbow, I I think that that's actually about the chakras. I think that's actually about us discovering our path through our chakras. So what I'm going to do is take you through a story of something that happened to me that I feel is a necessary um conceptualization of what's happening with our chakras, right? So somewhere over the rainbow, I thought that was a pretty picture. So why over the rainbow? Because the seven chakras is the integration of the chakras of living within balance of all of our energies. So if you can, if you can integrate the seven, then you can live in a balanced state of mind. And then when I had my near-death experience back in 2012, I ended up with a sort of open line communication to God, for want of a better description. It was something, and it was going on inside of me, the dialogue. And it woke me up in the middle of the night. It was very strong back then. It woke me up in the middle of the night, and it said to me, spell, spell waste. And I said, do you mean... W A I S T or W A S T E. And the voice said, Exactly. And I said, I, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, um, Look at everything, all the organs and all the body relationship that happens beneath the waist is a waste. It's all about getting rid of the excess and uh, processing all the organs down there, process all of that. But the chakras also um, beneath the waist, if you're living in any of those three chakras on or beneath the waist, that you'll be living your life in despair. Um, and he told me that 71% of the population of the world live there. And I'm like, whoa. So 
um, what he was actually saying is um, somebody who say it would have to be your focus intent, like your total focus. So if your total focus went to any of these three chakras beneath the waist. So I got this information from chakras or some of this information from chakra.info that it said, feeling profoundly insecure, restless, without energy. This, this imbalance can manifest as anxiety, depression, rage, low self-esteem, resentment, and even suicidal thoughts. Um, also others, excessive abuse of drugs, alcohol, or self-abuse. Um, so people who would live in the, sh the root chakra might be completely go to go, uh, completely going towards fear all the time making a decision because of fear you know should I cross the road no I, I can't cross the road because I'm frightened I'll just walk 10 miles instead um and also anybody that's living on the mouse wheel of going to work coming home eating sleeping going to work coming home eating sleeping they've got no life They've got no time for anything else. They're just living on that mouse wheel because they don't know another way Oh, And I'm having this conversation and I'm saying, but there isn't a way out for these people. And he's saying to me, no, no, you're wrong. The only reason they're in that state is because they need to change their mindset. It's their mindset that's keeping them in that state. Um, anyway, the next one that he talked about was the sacral chakra. And he was saying to me that when the sacral chakra is out of balance, uh, you might be obsessed with overly obsessed in sexual energies or thoughts or behaviors which would lead to sexual desires being fulfilled. So that could even mean excessive, like, shopping, Except, you know what I mean? <laughs> excessive shopping for sexy clothes or excessive, any of those excessive intentions towards sexual things. Insecurities, too much focus on body image and somebody who's out of touch in relation to how they feel. Um, and then the solar plexus. I was told that this was the most harmful to all the others to be out of balance. And it said, and they told me, or he told me, or whatever God told me, as people with this imbalance, the sol solar plexus often shine. They completely shine. So they can be really magnificent, um, well-rounded people. They can be very manipulative. They can be the narcissists of this world. And they can often be the people that are so full of self-ego and do actions that's only important to them. And he told me that these were the most damaging of them all. Because these are the ones that actually do harm, whereas the other two only do harm to self. But the solar plexus actually manipulates others and does harm to others. So this, that was the reason why this is the most. But if you're living in it, any of these three states, you're living beneath the waist. Your life in focus is beneath the waist. And I don't know, it was like, uh, it was a lifestyle loop. So it would be, it leaves you with a feeling of lack. It, you're feeling dissatisfied with where you're at. You're always looking for when you're going to be happy. So I'll be happy when I move to that next house or I'll be happy when I get that new job or I'll be happy when I get that new house or I'll be happy when the rent's dropped or whatever often thoughts of despair, often substance abusers or controllers. And, and showed me this image that I couldn't get something that was quite right, but it's showing me this image of souls reaching up for help, saying, help me. Um, anyway, that relates to... Um, The Wizard of Oz movie, because at the point of her embarking on that uh, scene where she gets taken up by the vortex, 
she actually gets taken by the vortex because she's frightened of losing her dog. And, you know, the dog god, god, dog, so frightened of losing her high self. She's frightened because her dog's going to be taken away from her. So she has to embark on the yellow brick road, which is following the road of impulses and desires, which is two sides of the coin. Meeting those three characters on the way and integrating those aspects that we talked about. Then the Wicked Witch of the West, she's, I mean, all she's got to do to get rid of her is throw water on her. What's what's that about? Well, water is to do with memory. It sort of suggests memory, remembering who you are. But if you think how Dorothy goes into that dream, it, there's a storm, and she she goes into unconscious. She comes out of this reality, and she goes into a dream inside herself. I mean. You've got basically the same start story in the Bible. Jacob and his coat of amazing colours. That, that's his chakras inside. Um, look at the word waste. It's round the middle. And in the material world, it's been twisted into expanded waistline, which is a waste. And what's in the middle of waste is an eye. Yeah. You're right in the middle of it. I mean, fine, if you've got the constitution of a seagull or something, then eat all this junk food and because they can process it. Because that's another thing. We've got inside us, we have a system that processes food or processes things that are taken in as mind food. And the material realm is about making everything physical. So instead of expanded consciousness, it becomes an expanded waistline. And in those lower three chakras, it's all about greed. It's all about service to the, the lower self, to the body. Um, I see countless people going into a gym and they're like, they're doing this body worship like it's a temple, but there's no spirituality. Yeah. A general sweeping statement, but I mean, there are one or two, but gen generally it seems they've gone down this escapism route of turning to, oh, I'm going to have this superhuman, super fit body. Um, but there's there's nothing else to them. Um, they're lacking that spiritual oil. Yeah, yeah. But they're looking good. So they're getting that, yeah. that they're getting that, that lower uh, um, desire fulfilled. Well, it's a, we're all magnetic, therefore we're also, we can be energy vampires. If you're going down the gym and then going to look for a tan and whatever, and it's, it's very much of, look at me, look at me, I've got the perfect body. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, a, that's the sacral, that's the problem. Even if it's not spoken, there's a, a level in the subconscious that will pick up on the energy where everybody else is looking at them in, in an admiring way, thinking, oh, I wish that my body was like that. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a type of feeding going on, on on a very unconscious or subconscious level. Mm. I mean, you go into a room and you can sense people say, oh, there's an atmosphere in here. Well, I hope there is an atmosphere because otherwise you won't be able to breathe. But yeah. um, they're talking like a, neg like a negative energy. There's nothing seen. And People just call it, they collectively call this a, a sixth sense. Vibe. It's called a vibe. You feel the bad vibe. Yeah, that's the vibration. Yeah. yeah. So the solar plexus, I mean, it's, 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 I assume it's Latin. It means place of the sun. It's the house of bread. It's the Bethlehem. It's the same story. But of course, that Christ consciousness, that sun, has to fall down to the root because just look at nature, what nature does. It, it, 
that that seed has to go into darkness and then it has to find its find its way through its roots get a feel for the ground that it's in now the world or the earth I mean, it tells you in genesis that man was created from the dust from the earth it's talking about the physical creation of man so the earth if it's not fertile if it's if it's not open to new ideas and it's stuck in that lower consciousness side that's all it's going to see um and that seed will not germinate and then it won't rise it won't become like the trees and get heading towards the light yeah and then it brightens out <laughs> um rudolf steiner talks of uh, we're basically an upside down plant man the root ball is the brains of the tree it's in earth mm -hmm. they're so they're Upside down version of us, where we're sort of more free moving upon the earth, but we're not separate from it. I like to think of us as being uh, like an individual hair attached to the head. So we, when you're when you're just that hair, and you are the air as well. You are that the heir to the the kingdom. Seek the kingdom with insight, side, and all will be given to you. When you when you're convinced that you are just that single thing on the end of one hair, and you don't realise that you're connected, um, this is the weird thing with this whole spiritual journey. There's a in the material realm, you have this separation of self from from higher self. Walking this, going down the spiritual path, you realise that you are separate from it and you're just in a body which is part of this realm but at the same time everything is connected and interconnected you're not a separate isolated individual i in the physical no. it it's almost like the, the greatest ever the ultimate computer game did you did you ever get into my conceptualization of that it being a pop-up world have you ever heard me explain that? My pop-up world no, no. theory. All right, so I perceive the world as being the I, the self, and the view of the self as far as the senses can sense. So my totality of my world, right at this moment in time, is actually quite small. It's this computer screen sitting in this little corner underneath the stairs. Um, it's not very big at all. And that's the totality of my current perception. Um, so nothing else in the world actually exists at this point of time because it's only, there's only me, there's only I in it. Now, I belong in an ocean and I'm a teardrop, a drop of water of that ocean you're also part of that ocean and therefore we're sharing the ocean, we're sharing the consciousness. But my perception is the only perception for me as your perception is your only perception for you. So the rest of the world actually isn't real. It isn't there at the moment. And the shops are not there at the moment until I get in my car and start imagining myself going to the shops. And then as I'm driving to the shops, the shops are actually, or they're, they're coming into view, they popped up. It's easier for people who play computer games to conceive this. Because when people have played computer games, they've gone from zone to zone to zone to zone. Whereas people who haven't played computer games haven't had that experience of going between zones but what it actually means is in my pop-up world anything's possible miracles are possible it's only my belief that they're not possible so say for instance you james you're in the uk i'm in australia so say later on i thought oh you know I bet I see James tomorrow at the IGA at the local shop. 
Now, you and I both know that that isn't possible because it would take you 20 out, 24 hours to get here, even if you hadn't, even if you've booked and all the rest of it. But technically, in a pop up world, it is possible. And it might not even be you. I could go to the shops tomorrow and see somebody that looks exactly like you and think, wow, I took a photograph of a guy today. Can you say, can I take your photograph? And bring the photograph back and say, look at that. I bumped into a guy that looked exactly like you. So that's kind of my theory of where we're at. I think we're creating all of it as individual people. The only problem with that is when people perceive that, they imagine it's an egotistical concept, but it's not because I'm not trying to control anybody else in my world. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to control anything. I'm just accepting what is and then waiting for the magic to happen. If I was trying to control others within that concept of the pop-up world, it would be an entirely different um, thing. Anyway, over to you. Yeah, uh, that, uh, I've pretty much said the same thing in slightly different words. I remember, and it, it, it's going to seem a strange idea to many, it's like when you get in a car, are you moving or is the whole world rolling on a screen to, or, 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 towards you and it appears that you're moving but you're not actually going anywhere everything's coming to, to you <laughs> and what's well, possible because you've got, got all these different movements and things but certainly with doing something like an ayahuasca journey you can go into the eye of the storm where there's no, there's nothing going on, and then the entire world is that. That's that's just why the world does go round in people's heads, because they're in confusion at what they're looking at, and and it's like, I don't. This doesn't. This world doesn't make sense, and that's if they even question that far. Some will just get seem to just go through the motion, like they are part of that background scene, um, what are called NPCs, just totally oblivious to it all. But this is where it's like, bring the children unto me. Well, look at what a child does. Like you pro you've probably done it yourself with a, a doll's house and you've got two little figurines. And you go into this world that you create. You've got these representations of mummy and daddy and a baby or whatever. And a child will, will be totally in that world. They're now animating everything. But did that child create the doll's house or those figurines or anything? That's another version in a, another physical body somewhere along the line. So, but it, we're all part of one. So, by extension, that child has created that world physically. But, and yeah. it's now playing all the characters in that world. And as, if, we, if I take a sort of very sort of male egoic example say if i bought well even better if i designed it myself and actually got the materials and built myself let's say a sports car am i going to sit and look at it or am i going to get in it and test it out and drive it and experience it the thing that i've created i now want to experience so this fantastic whatever it is this call it God, this creator of this entire thing. It, it's like, well, you've got this all-powerful, omnipresent being, so is it inconceivable that something that could create all this can also then play every every character at the same time? Yep. yep. We are all as of, of the one. We're all having individual experience of this dream, as it were. I, I think he sent us out there to create. And that's the reason why he doesn't get involved. Like, he sent us out there to create, and then we drew to ourselves. We've got a section of ourselves there upstairs. 
um, I had a bit of a problem explaining this to somebody the other day who kept saying, it's not my fault because this person kept hearing that it was his fault. And he came back to me and he said to me, it's not my fault. And I'm saying, well, I'm not saying, nobody's really saying it's your fault, but you've created the ideal scenario by which your soul can burn. Your soul's created that. It's created that external experience so you can learn that particular lesson that you need to learn right now. So it's, it's your fault in that way, but it, it's not an exact reflection of what you desired. Mm. Mm. It depends on the energy that you put out from how you feel with what you're interacting with as to how it will respond. But I mean, look at the first, the, the first element on, on the table is hydrogen. Well, that makes up everything. Everything is hydrogen. For anything to come into this physical reality, it can only take a singular form. So if I say, picture a car, picture the, or picture the car, or picture the ball, or, or the tree, you, you may create an image in your mind, but in your mind, you can also change the color, the shape, the, the species of tree, and you can have this all going on and you can have it continuously going round and round in your head. But as soon as you try and put that on paper or as a, a wooden sculpture or whatever, it's only ever going to take one form. It's impossible to have a ball that's continuously changing color as a physical object or as a drawing. So for this hydrogen, which is the hidden red one, the hid hidden red generation, it can take it, it takes multiple forms. It, 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 as Neville Goddard says, there is only one and it's playing all the parts. Mm -hmm. But it's this reality, this, this mirror world where, oh, you can't say you're God, that's egotistical. Yeah. But it's not you're the God over everybody else, you're the God of your, your own world, oh. which is your physical <laughs> which which comes back to somewhere over the rainbow, we co-create ourselves yeah. in that journey yeah. on the Realibrit Road. We co-create ourselves as we go. We're actually our own creation. But it's not from a there can never we can never influence the external world with that. Because yeah. the external world is only a reflection of what we need to learn from. Hmm, interesting. All right, so anything else you want to say and I'll I'll shut this off. Um yeah what's the yeah so that background scene everything that's external to you is gonna play out regardless. You you come into this reality which has this element of time and it spend your time wisely. What is getting your attention? Where are you giving your energy to? So mm, I agree with this one. So it, it, it's, it's, everything is a pre presentation and it's an opposite presentation. So in the spiritual, you have I am. Its opposite is Maya, M-I-A, which is also like gold, frankincense and myrrh. It's my R-H, my blood my blood um but it's been turned into a ridiculous story and unfortunately most people don't seem to re progress from the when you first learn to read at school it's like you don't understand really what you're reading or what the purpose of, of, it, of it is you just sort of learn it and then most will just don't progress beyond that level they don't look for the deeper meanings where you're in a material real world and then you're, you're given these things and oh yeah that's a literal history of <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's right. not there it's a spiritual history it's nothing to do with the external world but you can learn from that internalizing that experience and then see how it how you interact because if it's a computer game that that one that's playing the game is interact with with that game with that background scene, that character that you're playing in that game is it'll move up and then the scene will move behind it. It 
it will reflect. We're basically magnetic. So if you're if you're feeling fear about the world, what's the you're going to draw towards you, you're going to get more of that. Exactly. People will, people don't know how to communicate or what they're communicating with. So, I want a Ferrari. Well, from the spiritual side, it doesn't know what a Ferrari is. All it hears is I want, and it's it's neutral. It, it hears I want. Okay, you want more feeling of want, then. So here you go, and you you will have more want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like. I want to I want to lose weight. Oh, well we're gonna make you overweight in order to give you the desire to want to lose it. Yeah. It's like praying, you become prey because you're wanting, you're 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 you are you are putting out an energy saying, I haven't got this mm. and I want this, I want this to change. Mm. Please and and you're giving away your power because you're, you're going to something external, which is usually like a, a colored window or a, a calm thing <laughs> that has no life in it. And it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. What, two of my favorite sayings in the world are where your focus goes, grows, whatever you're giving energy to will amplify, whether it's positive or negative. So if I come back from the shops and complain all day about the price of tomatoes, all day, then likely I'm going to go there tomorrow and find they've gone up doubled in price because that's where I've given my energy. Um, whereas if I spent all day going, oh my goodness, that was amazing. I've got those tomatoes for nothing. Or I've got those tomatoes for a dollar. I can't believe it. I'm so grateful. The next day I might find that somebody gives me tomatoes for nothing because I've, I've then raised my vibration and the whole thing. And then the second um thing that I now live by is what's important to you is not necessarily important to me and what's important to me is not necessarily important to you and it just explains so much it's like so many people don't know how to be authentic so you say to people um I was going to use you in a, use an example there, but I won't because somebody might get offended if I do. <laughs> the example that came to mind, but it's like somebody saying, "Oh yes, I'll cut the lawn tomorrow," but it's important to me, and they're telling me what I want to hear, but it's not important to them. Um. So uh, anyway, those are my two favorite sayings. What are your two favorite sayings? Um, oh, that's a big question. Um, I, I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, uh, certainly where the attention goes, um, and it does, and a lot of it does cause attention on the mind when it's got your attention. The adverts are the adversary. It's getting you. Is that well? There's another. There's another saying. It's like with car keys, it's always the last place you look. Yeah. So, what I found was, with all the things that don't add up in the external world, the only answer I've ever got back is everything's a lie. It's not how we've been told. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I pretty much exhausted. Ever looking externally, the next great conspiracy theory is probably going to tell me exactly the same thing because the definition of madness is to keep doing the same thing and expect expecting a different result. result. Mm. So there's only one other place to look, and if you go, if you look without, you go without. If you go within, it it it, it tells you in in the in the Bible Bible seek seek the kingdom within, and all will be given to you. Yeah, you've got words where you've got I in the middle of it and I mean like waste is one well AU um, how do you say AU it represents gold as an element but you're in all yeah. and it's if you, if you write your story you become the or Thor Thor is the son of the Odin <laughs> And that—that's what all it—all it is—is all it is, is being 
master of your, your own thoughts. So yeah. if you're like, I say something, but it might offend people. Well, the problem's in them. If they're being triggered and they're allowing anger to come up or a reactionary, um, rather than thinking about what's being said and weighing it up inside and then responding, if they're going, oh, it's not, it's this, it's that, oh, it, it's because they're in that lower consciousness. They're not in control of their emotions. Within that vessel, they have a mutiny on the ship. They have this thing called anger that's come up that's now took over. Yeah, They're not captured. Not the captain Kirk. Mm. Kirk is the Scottish. It, 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 it is an enterprise, like in, it's a Star Trek. <laughs> On the one side, the logic of Spock. On the other side, you have Bones, who's coy, he's shy. So he's, but he represents the emotions and the passions. Now the captain Kirk sits in the middle and has to listen to the advice of the two and weigh up. But it is going where no man has gone before because it's not anywhere you can physically go. It's within such a self. There's a whole universe in waiting to be explored. But we didn't know that. I mean, at, at, no. at, at eight or ten when we're watching this stuff, you're thinking, wow, you know, this, this great big, I don't know, craft going right out there. We didn't know that was what it was about. So... A couple of days ago, I had a very long conversation about this, um, which is right at the beginning of all this crap we've been through a few years, and over the last couple of years, pretty much. Um, I had a reoccurring concept that came to me as I woke every morning, and when I have messages coming through and it's the same message like one morning, two morning, three morning, four morning, then I'll go, okay, well, this is important. It's coming through to me every morning. So I wrote it down and this is what it said. To choose one's own fate rather than having it chosen for you, you need to get rid of all addictions and manage the ego. So you, do you want me to repeat that? Yeah, 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 that's worth again. To choose one's own fate rather than having it chosen for you, then get rid of all addictions and manage the ego. So, and then I got addictions are the ties that bind. So, um, I had a, I mean, I, I used to be an alcoholic years ago, but not, not for, 20 years that I've been um, uh, I smoked right up until February of this year um, but I decided that and this was just a personal choice I decided to get rid give up smoking because the last thing that I wanted in this world was to get this far down the track and then be pulled back at the 12th hour because I smoked. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll give it up for a month. And that way, I don't have to say that I'm giving it up forever because I quite like smoking. But what it, what it would actually do is it would prove to me that I could. So I gave it up for a month and then I thought, well, actually, since I've given it up for a month, there's not really any point in going back to it. But I'm not saying that I'm never going to go back to it because my circumstances might change. By which it might be beneficial for me to go back to it. But now I know I can. So that was all about me, but. And I'm not saying in any way that you should give it smoking. But that wasn't the reason I was talking about that because your business is your business. I don't. But I just thought it was very interesting that I got that statement to say that basically if I didn't want to have my fate chosen for me, 
then I had to give up all addiction. It's just a statement and there's no accusation in it. Don't know whether it's right or wrong. Have you had any inkling of that on your path? Well, straight away, I think of the film Terminator. You've got a character in there called Kyle Reese. He's sent back by effectively by his son. Kyle Reese, if you change the, 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 the I for a what the Y for an I, it's an anagram of Mike Seer. And he is Mike Seer because he's from 2029, I think it was in the film. And he says to Sarah Connor, he's, he memorizes, he's been told to memorize this message by her son to come back. And, and he says, the future is not set except that which we make for ourselves. Yeah. And Sarah Connor, well, the Sarah is the cerebrum. It's the divine feminine. She, she goes from this in in the in her words in the film. I can't even balance a checkbook. This wait waitress who's like hopeless and yeah juggling. Her. Now she becomes this savior of the world. Mm. And it's like the father has to. Sorry, the son sends the father back, so the father then can create the son. It's like oh, this sounds a very familiar story suddenly. Mm. Mm. very clever and he, and he says to her she says is, she says that's not possible um, about living tissue over a, a, a robot and he says he says something about one possible future mm. Mm. and it is it's create our own futures it's this is this has been shown repeatedly more and more to me it's like Every day I'm faced with a, a presentation of I have material world fears of I haven't got this, I haven't got that, but no, 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 no. I know that by the end of the day I can turn that round. Yeah. I've got it slow. the blue skies yesterday. <laughs> but it's on the right track. So That's good. Um the way I the way I do that balance the checkbook thing is again through a movie which is kind of, I think it's the second Star Wars movie and it's Yoda telling Luke that whatever he takes into the cave will be what he's up against and he goes yeah. to, he goes to go in the cave and and Yoda says you don't need your lightsaber with you and Luke takes it anyway that he ends up chopping his father's head off and then it's himself after the head's been severed. It's actually a reflection of himself looking back at himself. And I think that that um, particular meme relates to what you're talking about in relation to if you've got a fear, then it's in you. If, it, if you've got a lack, then it's in you. All you need to do is take that lack and and push it over to the complete opposite of that. So, so for instance, my water bottle's like 90% empty now. Um, if I take that lack and just be grateful for the bit of water I've got left because it's all I need. I don't need any more than that little bit of water right now. So I'm very grateful for it. And everything's happening in the now anyway. And that I, you know what, I love the way that these movies have got like memes in them. Like, did you ever see um, Peaceful Warrior? No. Okay, so there's a movie called A Peaceful Warrior, and it's about this guy who's a gymnast um, going for the gold, and he has an accident. And uh, he ends up meeting this like spiritual guy. And he's in the park and then he discovers he's got a meeting at the same time. He's got to be at this meeting. So he goes to meet the spiritual dude and says the spiritual dude, listen, I'm in a real hurry. Can you make this quick? So the spiritual dude chucks him in the river off the bridge. <laughs> so he falls in the river, comes up and goes, what did you do that for? He said, well, you told me to make it quick. You even had a word for it. 
Ah. He said, I don't get it. <laughs> I thought, that's just brilliant. Brilliant. It's one of one of the sort of blueprints of life. Because it's basically taking a leap into the unknown, having no fear. Because what I find is sort of almost ironic when we talk about expanding consciousness. In all that expansion, where is there any place for doubt or fear? <laughs> They're the two things that can't be there. Yeah. They are, when you talk about the foundation stone, the bedrock, and you can see this with any, in the material world, it's so easy to see. You, you, you start with an idea, you give it to an architect, it's make it could, these characters could all be the same one anyway. But so you have an idea, you give it to an architect who draws up a blueprint, who gives it to a builder, and then over a period of time, that thought has now become a physical manifestation. So that's one blueprint. Go back to being like a child. You, you've took your first step. You're trying to master walking, and you fell over. I, is that going to put you off? Are you never going to try it again? Or are you going to persevere and keep going until you get it right? Until it becomes second nature. We don't even have to think about putting one leg in front of the other. But it requires that. It's a three-step process. Being open to the new ideas. So that creates the fertile soil for the seed. Then the conceptualization of it. How would it feel if I had that Ferrari, or that, that's not a very good analogy because I know I'd feel it would be like, yeah, great. But now I've got the problem, I've got to insure it. And fill it up with petrol. I'm fearful of taking the car out in case somebody's jealous and scratches the paintwork. So yeah, so you've got to pay people to protect it every time you stop anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So... But then you go down this spiral route of, of try, having to gain more and more material wealth and create... But the wealth actually creates a hell like that, that material wealth, because you're then fearful of somebody trying to steal it from you. So from the concept, it's then falling back into the dream, knowing that there's going to be like this invisible hand that you're not going to go splat. But I will say this to anybody, whatever you listen to, truth-seeking or whatever it happens to be, or any topic, if you've got doubt and fear in there, if you've not done that inner work, that shadow work, if you're still being triggered by anything, then you ain't going to make it. And I'm not saying that to scare people, I'm saying that to jolt people to say, yeah, the inner work is the, is the foundation stone on which you build. Because if that foundation isn't right, everything, that structure you're building inside yeah. yourself is going to... Yeah. Now, the real world has given everybody the answer. It's a well-known theme of divide and conquer. Yeah. That is exactly what you do. You're dividing yourself from your lower lower ego. And now you have a reformation. It's divide and conquer, not conquer, although you are conquering your fears, but you're in agreement with yourself. Your heart, mind, and body are now all in unison. You have an internal universe where there is no chaos. From yeah. that, you then can raise out. And it does work because I've had total strangers I've passed in the street and they, they just say hello at them and I'm smiling. And they, and it, it works. And I, 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 I use the Neville Goddard invitation here. Test it for yourself. Have, hold that feeling inside yourself, that radiant, um, mm. ecstatic feeling. Mm -hmm. People will you will draw people towards you that are on that same vibration. Mm. Think about with a, a TV, a broadcast, it's putting out a disturbance into the ether. When we speak, we are putting out a disturbance into the ether, but what what are we putting out? You, you, your energy is going out into this background scene, and now it becomes this wonderful game, and it's like, I know nothing's going to hurt me. I know I'm not going to be physically dragged out and um, something stuck in my arm or <laughs> this is just the fear nonsense exactly it, 
it seems very clear that it, this can only work by you voluntarily giving up your power, giving away your energy by going with a script. And Hollywood Absolutely. Shows, that takes a bad script, that is the death of their career. Yeah. Yeah. So write, write your own script. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna shut up now. I'm gonna cut this all. Thank you very very much. That was a really 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 cool interesting conversation. And um, I'll leave a link to your channel below. And and that's it. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening. To talk now.